afternoon, Cape Town. Hello. Good afternoon. Woo! Fantastic. Oh, wonderful stuff. And the crowd went mild. That's wonderful. Good afternoon and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Amazing that you're all here and have come out and support our local chef talent. More people coming in. Come on in. Grab a seat. We've got another live demonstration. And because we want to support all our local South African chefs, all our demos here today featuring our SA chefs are free of charge, which is fantastic. Who's here? Who's going to see Buddy later? Anyone going to see Buddy? You're going to see Buddy. Fantastic. A couple of people. He is in the house. He's been around. He's going to be backstage soon. And he's on next at half past three. Now, today's event is possible. And the reason we can bring all these fantastic chefs here is because of these awesome sponsors over here. We've got Ginger Food Magazine, The Vineyard Hotel, Chef Works, Kenwood, Afrox Handy Gas, Qantas, Free Range Jewels, Paderberg Wines, Aquavita, Goodfellas, Kai Knives, and the International Hotel School. So please, folks, just say a huge thank you to our sponsors for allowing us to bring these chefs to our stages here at the Good Food and Wine Show. There's a couple of rules as it per anything in life. If you have a mobile phone, please just switch it to silent. We don't want you to turn it off. Just make sure it's on silent. We want you to tweet. We want you to Facebook using hashtag GFWS2015 or at GoodFoodSA. Tweet us. Send us your photos. We want to share it with the world. So we'll send it to as many people as possible. So without further ado, the exits. In case of emergency, the exits are as follows. So if there's an emergency, that's the way you go. When the show is over, we leave stage right, and on the way out, you can taste some of the fantastic wine that has been paired with these dishes that the chefs are gonna be cooking today. So are you guys ready, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, for your next live cooking demonstration? Fant yes, there we go, that man is excited. So get the energy levels up. Ladies and gentlemen, this man is the executive chef of the Soho Sun, the Sun Square uh, Hotel in Cape Town. He's gonna be cooking something fantastic for you guys this afternoon. So let's put our hands together. Let's start playing a bit of an applause. Let's build it up. Let's build it up louder. Ladies and gentlemen, Chef Sean Bruce. Just be good to me. It's all yours, Chef. Ready. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, everybody. There we go, hello. Okay, welcome to my little show, my last show. Um, it's been fun. Luckily, I'm opening the curtain um, for, uh, what's his name? This. Buddy is on after. So who's here for Buddy? Um, there's Buddy, there's Buddy people. Sadly, I'm not Buddy. Okay, anyway, so tonight we're gonna be doing a pork belly. A bit of a roast and braised pork belly. I'm gonna do some lovely mashed potatoes, and do some uh, mushrooms, some pea puree and a whole bunch of like nice little things to put together. This will be fantastic. Uh, okay, so first of all, uh, just to get started, to so get everything kind of going, we're just going to make a, a quick mashed potatoes, because that's kind of the thing which takes the longest. We've just got some potatoes boiling away there, so I'll go there. And we'll just put it in a lovely little blender here. We've got a fantastic Kenwood, which um, will blend everything for us. And make it, but you can't use, you've got to use a balloon whisk for your mashed potatoes, or else it turns into paste. Then we're going to start looking at the pork belly. Okay, so here's our pork belly. Now, people often ask, how do you um, combine your, your ingredients and how to make something? And I, I was thinking about it this morning. And basically, I, I thought about it, you know, the, the pork. I, I look at your main ingredients and how it's, it's like you look deeper into the ingredients. So you look, what does the pig do? Where does the pig live? What does the pig eat? So I was thinking, okay, cool, so the pig lives out in the forest, it forages around for mushrooms, it, you know, eats apples, it eats herbs. And so all the things it tries to eat, I try and incorporate into the dish and it kind of makes sense that all of it will go together. Well, that's the plan anyway. Okay, we've got like, some lovely knives from Kai. Um, if I can tell you guys anything, just get yourself a decent set of knives um, for the kitchen because it really does make life a hell of a lot easier. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so what we're going to do is we're just going to score the fat through here. Basically what you do, you want to take it just through the, just to the skin and no further. And they'll make sure you get a lovely crackling. There we go. So you just take it, score it all the way through. If you don't score it, so you're not going to get a beautiful crackling, number one. Number two, it's going to be a pain in the butt to, to um, cut afterwards. 
So we just score it through like that. I'm going to be brazing it in Earl Grey tea, which is going to be quite interesting. I'll tell you a bit about Earl Grey tea just now. Um, feel free to ask questions at any time. If there's any kind of weird questions you have, I'll try my best to answer them. Any questions? Also, watch what you're doing. These knives are sharp. They tend to take your fingers off if you're not looking properly. I used to have long fingers. No, I don't. <laughs> so, yeah. See, so if you've got a real knife, it just kind of glides through. Look at that. Easy peasy, Japanese. Yeah. Okay, so we're just going to season it up a little bit. Like that. Lots of salt. Pork loves salt and pepper. And you basically want to rub it in so it gets in between everything. I mean, you can see it's got all the, this is basically what your bacon's made out of. You know, that lovely streaky bacon. They cure that and slice it up. You fry it in your pan. It's fantastic. Okay, um, let's see. What should we do next? Okay, we're going to do a lovely pea puree with it. So I'm going to use my little pretty machine here. It's called a Thermomix. It's a, basically, it's a fancy mixer which gets hot at the end of the day. So basically, you can put anything inside there and it will cook it at the same time. Um, everybody's got a bag of the old frozen peas at home. So, I mean, it's quite simple. There's no real recipe to it. You just throw it inside there and give it a good buzz and cook it up. It's going to take about 10 minutes to do. Okay. You set the timer. Might get a bit noisy. Okay. Just put a bit of water inside there. And just let that cook. There we go. Cool beans. Okay, now we're going to carry on with our pork belly. So what you want to do is, um, we call this mirepoix. Um, it's basically all your basic ar aromatic veggies. You just really rough chop them. Okay. And that's going to be part, part of your braising base. And yes, you can chop fast like that if you want. It just takes practice. Keep your fingers out the way. When you're doing your braises and you're putting your, your aromatics in, it doesn't have to be finely chopped or anything like that. You just kind of throw it in. Don't worry about leaves and all that. It's all going to be part of the flavor. Dump it in like that. Again, with your onions, you don't even have to take the skin off. You can just chop it in just like that. The skin, the skin of the onion also normally gives you a nice color to your stocks. So that's a nice little tip for the future. There we go. Okay, I've got some fantastic Earl Grey tea. So you're going to put a whole bunch of tea bags inside there. So basically what you're going to do now, normally you've got two ways of, of cooking pork. You can either braise it or roast it. So braising, in, you know, you put it under water, in, into like a, a stock and you cook it for a long time in the oven. But then you kind of miss out on the whole crackling part of it. Roasting, again, you get the crackling part, but then you miss out on the moisture. So I try to do a bit of both. So I put my tea bags inside there, and I kind of lay that on top there. So when you put your liquid in, which I'm using lovely Chardonnay wine, you, you want the liquid to come just below the, um, the, the fat line. So basically the meat part of the pork belly braises, and the top part roasts. Like that. What inspired me to use Earl Grey tea? Okay, I'll tell you a story about Earl Grey tea now. Let me just shove this in the oven quickly. Okay. Um, JR, can you just drain the potatoes and shove them in the, the mixer for me, please? Okay, JR, it's fantastic. Lord. These, these are the real stars of the show, is Pereira, uh, Perea and JR. They've been doing all the hard grunt behind the behind the scenes. Um, Earl Grey tea. So basically, I mean, it's, Earl Grey's got a lovely story. It was a, a Chinese diplomat 
he was saved by an English diplomat. Okay, and now what they did, they took the, um, uh, uh, the variety of, of orange and they put the, the, the peel inside and they presented it to the, the Earl of Grey, Charles II, at the time, and it became so good that it was called Earl Grey Tea. Now, it's going back to the citrus. Now, the citrus comes inside the pork. Um, it basically cooks up, and the citrus cuts through all the fat. So anything kind of acidic like that will go really into the fat and really kind of break it down nicely. So that's why I use Earl Grey Tea. Easy. Okay. So this is the cheese way of making mashed potatoes. So basically, you just kind of cook up your potatoes and make it work somehow. There we go. So you can just blitz it up nicely there. You can get a bit interesting with um, your mashed potatoes. I like cream butter, and I've got a whole bunch of Parmesan cheese. It just gives a nice kind of earthy flavor. Again, thinking of the pork. You know, porks love, pigs love potatoes. So, I mean, they're always in the fields foraging, all kinds of things like that. Yeah, I can put some chives in. So, see, they're healthy. Bring your knife, please, and butter. Butter. Then you wish you all had one of those in the, at home. Just like, bring me butter, bring me a knife. Do this, do that. It would be fantastic. Put a nice little chive inside there. Throw it inside there. If you've got these kind of things at home, you have to use them, guys. I mean, they're, they're great little, little things. I mean, that mash is just going to be beautiful. Wow. Makes it nice and fluffy. But again, don't use the blade. Only use the balloon whisk attachment. And you'll get the creamiest, beautiful mashed potatoes ever. And just a touch of cream. I don't know. My mom does the same thing. Uh. Any other questions? Do you want to ask something? I went to Weber's. And I went to put on my head. Hmm. Okay, um, so again, looking at the pork, what else do they eat? They love mushrooms. So now we use, I'm going to be using some lovely um, uh, wild exotic mushrooms, you know. Because again, they love foraging in the forest. Isn't that cool? It's like a samurai sword. Like, swing! <laughs> um, mushrooms don't... Put them near water, please, guys. Um, it just absorbs all, everything. It becomes a very, a very it's quite, becomes quite a mess. So basically, you just want to peel them. If you see they are a bit dirty, you can just wipe them off with a cloth. That's all you want. So, I mean, you've got a lovely selection here. You've got some oyster mushrooms there. This is shimishi mushrooms. I mean, they're really pretty. Look at those. Pretty, aren't they? They're like little miniature beautiful mushrooms. Just take off the nibs like that. You got some fantastic shiitakes. Just kind of rough chop them. So this is quite a, a, a rough meal. It's not a, a a fine dining meal by any stretch. So it's something you can whip up que quick and easy at home. And that's it. Lovely shiitake mushrooms, porcini mushrooms, inoki mushrooms. Most of them you don't even have to cook. You can just put them on just like that. Okay. Sorry? Yeah, I've tried it out in the forest. And then, but you've got to walk around this huge manual. Which is like, you look at the mushroom and go, okay, which one is that? Which one is that? It's a bit nerve-wracking the first time you try a foraged mushroom. You never quite know. It looks a little bit like the black widow of mushrooms, but it also looks a bit like the porcini. So which one could it be? And so when you put it in your mouth, it gets a bit scary. So yeah. So yes, I've gone foraging for mushrooms. Potatoes are done. Okay, let's look at the pork. Oh. 
Wow. Magic of TV, huh? Okay, it's beautiful and crackling. So like everything has been sitting in there and brazing away at a slow rate. Um, basically, I like to braise my pork for about three hours at about 160, around about there. I like to start off high, so at about 200 degrees for about 20 minutes, then bring it down to about 150, 160 for about two hours, and then finish off high on 200 again. So that will give you a nice, beautiful crackling. If you just lift this out, let's see. See the tea bags are still there. Yeah, just scrape it off like that. You see, it's so soft that the meat comes away with the, the bags. There we go. Okay. Okay, what we're going to do now, you never throw away your braising liquid. I mean, that's quite an important part of everything. I mean, that's where you get your, your gravy from. So if you just top it up with a bit of water, you can just bring it to the boil. It's like Granny used to do. You can strain it out. Um, it's the same way. There we go. So we're just gonna, and then we're just going to make a beautiful gravy out of this. I mean, all your flavors are inside, all your garlic and your carrots and onions and everything's inside there. So we just bring that to the boil, you strain it out, and we just thicken it up with something. Ooh. It's looking nice. So we can just mount this with a bit of butter. When you're making purees like this, you can get quite creative. You can put some uh, mints inside there, do whatever you want. Just finish it off. Maybe a bit of thyme. It's beautiful. You see the color of that. It's like this electric green. You can't get that by doing anything else. So we're going to throw a bit of thyme in there, a bit of seasoning, and it'll be ready. There we go. Cool. Okay, let's finish off our little gravy quickly. So you see it's busy boiling away there and all the teas and stuff. So we're just going to put it through a little pot over here. Now, ideally, in a perfect world, you want to let this kind of go for a very long time. So you really want to reduce out of it, reduce everything out of it so it becomes nice and thick. But for today's purposes, we're just going to thicken up with a bit of corn flour just so you can see the, the general. But if you taste it, it tastes spot on. So just bring that to the boil, you put a bit of a corn flour with it. Okay. So now we're going to look at this pork belly a little bit more. So the gravy's almost done, the mash is done, pork belly's done. Now we've just got to think of your, your veggies and your mushrooms. Okay. So what we're going to do with the, we're actually going to put a bit of apple with it, make it a bit interesting. So again, you're getting the a bit more earthiness, a bit of acidity coming in there to cut through the pork. I hate these things. How do they work? That one. There we go. There we go. So you're just going to put a fair amount of olive oil inside there. When sauteing anything, just use oil first and then finish off with butter. If you just start off with the butter, you're just going to burn the butter. It's going to be a horrible rancid taste. So always start with oil. Do most of your cooking in the oil and finish off with butter. Okay. Any questions so far? Yes. Come here. Come stand in front of me. I can't hear you from there. Speak to me. Come here. Come closer. Mmm. <laughs> Ooh, it's 
I think, uh, this, can, can they hear what you wanted to say? Sorry, yes, I just wanted to say, when that reduces, obviously it will be a fantastic jus. Yeah, exactly, this is a jus, this is mm. the basis of a jus. So basically it will come all the way down. Fantastic. Fabulous. I just wanted to know, with the olive oil, do you prefer olive oil or canola oil? Or uh, it depends it what you're doing. It depends what you're doing. I mean, there's so many different grades of oils. Okay, we'll talk about oils now. So oils, your, your full-grade extra virgin olive oils over here, they're actually not great for frying stuff like this. You want a, a lower grade, your canola kind of oils. Your extra virgins are great for your salad dressings. It's because of the heat, which what happens when oil comes to a certain heat. Now, olive oil's got a low, I forget what the term is, but it, it, it um, gets rancid quite quickly at a certain heat. So you actually don't want oil for sauteing. So you use a, a whole vegetable oil, I mean, a seed oil for your sunflower oil is fantastic. And then you can, it's always great to finish off with the olive oil because then you're getting the flavor. So as soon as you start destroying the flavor with the heat, you're losing the flavor of the olive oil. You see? So we've just got some lovely Granny Smith apples here. We're just going to throw inside here and just cook up. I mean, most people put applesauce with it, but I'll just cook the apples, make it a lot nicer. I think, anyway. There we go. Again, we can season that up. I'm just going to get them a little bit of color. And once it's got a little bit of color, we throw the mushrooms in. The mushrooms take literally seconds to cook. They don't have to cook very long. We can kind of start thinking about putting it all together, can't we? Okay, that's bubbling away nicely. Um, bowl with some corn flour. Yeah, I need some bowl to mix it with. All right, I'll make a plan, don't worry. Don't worry, I'll make a plan. Chefs make plans. There we go. She's run away for nothing. <laughs> He's gonna come back and say, I did not need that. Go away, minion. Just mix it through a little bit. So it was thickened up nicely. Beautiful. And we'll just finish up with a couple knobs of butter. You see, JR, I don't need it. I'm done already. Yeah, you missed the whole crux of the show. The butter will just balance all the flavors out. And it's called mounting, what we said. Mounting with butter, and it just gives it that beautiful sheen. And it just mellows out all the flavors, makes everything come together nicely. Yeah. The tea smell comes through so beautifully. Yeah. You just throw the mushrooms inside at the same time. Like I said, I'm not gonna cook the gnocchis. I'll cook them, we'll just put them on as a garnish. There we go. Okay. Okay, like I said earlier, I mean, the, the reason of cutting the pork belly is to get the great crackling, but it also makes it a hell of a lot easier to, to cut through. Because trying to battle through Crispy pork skin is not an easy thing to do. We just take it like that. Cut into whatever kind of portion size you think you'll be using. It's easy as that. There we go. All done. Num num num. It's good. So like I said, we're just going to finish up with a little knob of butter, just to loosen everything up. That's done. Now we can start beginning to construct our dish. Find a nice plate here. We'll use this one today. 
Do you want to shove some mashed potatoes in the piping bag? Thank you very much. This is our beautiful pea puree we made a bit earlier. You can see it's like so thin and beautiful. It's, it's going to go fantastically. We can just spoon this on here. Kind of smear it across a bit. Um, let's wait for our lovely veggies over here. Take a couple of nice pieces of pork belly, kind of just rest it on there. Like I said, this is a very simple dish. You guys can do this at home quite easily. Pipe a bit of mashed potatoes. This mashing pork is beautiful. Take a bit of these beautiful mushrooms over here. Like I said, these don't have to be cooked. Quite tasty just by themselves. That's it. Bit of garnish. All done. Here we go. Any questions? That's it, folks. Ah, Chef ah, Sean ah. Bruce. That was that was like lightning speed, wasn't it? Was it? Yeah, it was lightning speed. I'm getting that was used amazing. to it now. now. I'm getting so fast. The first time took me an hour, then 45 minutes, now half an hour. I'm getting this is good. crazy. This was this was super quick. Next man. week I'll be doing this You would have won a minutes. speed challenge anywhere in the world, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Give him a huge round of applause, South African thank chef much. Sean Bruce. Thank you, Sean. Thank you so much for coming through this afternoon, ladies and gents. Uh, we do now need to prepare the theatre for Buddy's show. So we can ask everyone, please, in an orderly fashion, just to exit stage right. If you want to come up and just try and grab a quick photo if you want to. Unfortunately, there's no samples of this one right now. But you can also go and grab a little taster of the wine. We need to clear the theatre really quickly to prepare it for Buddy's, uh, for Buddy's show shortly. So thank you so much. Thanks to our awesome sponsors, Ginger Food Magazine, Vineyard Hotel, Chef Works, Kenwood, Afrox Handigas, Qantas, Free Range Jewels, Perderberg Wines, Aquavita, Goodfellas, Kai Knives, and the International Hotel School. You guys have been fantastic. Thank you very much for coming through. Up next is Buddy Velastro. Thank you.